Hi friends, welcome to Beautifully Bookish Bethany. In today's video, I'm gonna be recommending to you tour titles from the 1980s and 90s. I'm making this video because as I'm filming this, we're about to jump into the second round of Tor.comathon. This is the second year that I'm hosting a readathon focused on reading books published by Tor and Tor.com who primarily do science fiction and fantasy. This year, one of the challenges on the bingo board is to read a 1900s book. And I had said with that, that prompt that if people were interested in a video with suggestions to meet that challenge, I could make one. Several people said that they wanted to see this video, so here I am. I'm going to give you a little bit of history and a disclaimer before I jump into the book recommendations, and uh, then I've got like a decent number of possibilities that you could check out if you're looking to meet that challenge. Before I jump into all of the books, here are my kind of blanket disclaimers. Number one, some of these are books that I've read, others are books that I have not read. I will let you know which are which. Also, some of these are books that I read many years ago, and I probably don't remember how well they hold up today. Others are books that I have read more recently and can speak more specifically to. However, I'm gonna tell you just in general, these are books that were published in the 1980s and 1990s, and as such, not an insignificant number of them don't totally hold up to today's standards of things like the handling of women or queer people or people of various races and backgrounds. So like, this is kind of my just blanket warning. I would not expect the majority of these books to get everything right. They may get some things very wrong. It is also the case that there are a few authors I'm going to mention today who have done or said things that are less than ideal in their lives. I think one easy example of this who I don't normally talk about on this channel, even though I've read a lot of his books because I was a big fan as a teenager, is Orson Scott Card. He's said some very homophobic things. There are people who just choose not to read his books at all, which I respect. I am going to include one of his books on this list because it came out during that time period and I think was an important book in the history of science fiction. But in general, I don't talk a whole lot about his books just because I try to make this channel a safe space for people of all different kinds of backgrounds and identities. Um, but yeah, there you go. There's my my blanket statement before we dive in disclaimer. With that said, let's go ahead and talk about the books. We're going to begin with the books that I have physical copies of. First is the one that is going on my TBR to meet this prompt, and that is Primary Inversion by Catherine Asaro. It is the first in a sci-fi romance series, from what I understand, and I know there are people who really, really love this series. I have heard that, uh, as I said, as I'm going to say about most of these, it may not hold up entirely to the modern day, but I'm excited to give it a try. So I haven't read this one yet, but it is on my TBR for the readathon. I'll tell you when things were published. This came out in 1995. It's also fun if you can see how the Tor logo has changed over time. This was from the 1990s and it has evolved significantly. Perhaps the most well-known book that I'm going to put on this list is The Eye of the World by Robert Jordan. Wheel of Time is kind of having a resurgence with the Amazon Prime show and this is the first book in the series. It was originally published by Tor in 1990 and is kind of an old school, very slow paced, epic fantasy, clearly inspired by Tolkien, Lord of the Rings type books. Heads up that if you don't like super slow paced descriptive books, this may not be the one for you. While I know people who absolutely love this and love the entire series, I also know people who find it to be pretty dry and tedious. So depending on your preferences, you could try the audiobooks. That might be a way to check it out. But if you've been wanting a reason to try the Wheel of Time series, this could be your opportunity. Next is a book that came out in 1994. People who have been around this channel for a while know that I and my friend Leanna at Leanna's Library both have championed end this book, even though there are lots of haters. That is The Wizard's First Rule by Terry Goodkind. Terry Goodkind was quite the character, and I will say that the books in this series go very much downhill a few books in, 
but I think this is really fun and accessible fantasy. I do really love the way he does female characters, at least in the first few books although there's always like some weird elements to it. These are kind of predictable basic bitch fantasy with some kind of a MacGuffin that they're trying to solve at the end, but I think what makes me and other people like me and Liana and other friends that we have really love them is the characters. And again, you know, a few books in, I like he kind of loses the characterization, things go really downhill. But the early books in the series I think are really enjoyable. I would say the best book is book two, Stone of Tears. Like if there was one that I was gonna say is excellent and really holds up, weird elements aside, it would be Stone of Tears, which was also published in the 90s. So if you wanted to give Terry Goodkind a try, you could read Wizards First Rule. The downside to books like these is they're like pretty long. So if you're an audiobook listener, that could be a way to get through them. But I know super lengthy books are not ideal for readathons. However, they are tour books that would meet that prompt. Speaking of books that are weird, that are not going to be everybody's cup of tea, but I really enjoy, you could try Shadow and Claw by Jean Wolfe. This is a bind up of the first two books in the Book of the New Sun, and the first one came out in 1980. Tor is now republishing these in their Tor Essentials lines. So you can get them through that. But these are very interesting sci fantasy books. They're set in the far future, as eventually becomes obvious, but initially they read more like fantasy because people have forgotten how a lot of technology works. And they follow a apprentice to an assassin's guild, and a lot of really weird stuff happens. There's a lot of metaphor for religion and theology and philosophy and stuff. There are weird books. I completely understand why people might hate them because of the misogyny or other various things, but I liked them. Liana also liked them. If you want to hear more, the first two books were actually a pick for our Blades and Bodice Rippers book club last year, and we had a live show. <laughs> our other two members were not fans of this one, but we enjoyed it. So, you know, if you're down for some weird Catholic inspired sci fantasy stuff, maybe try Jean Wolfe. Personally, I think it's kind of brilliant, but you have to be willing to pay close attention and do a lot of mental work to figure out what's going on. Then for another installment in the Tor Essentials line, we have this bind up, Worlds of Exile and Illusion by Ursula K. Le Guin. This bind up was originally published by Tor in 1996, but the earliest novel in this bind up actually came out in 1964. That is Rokanon's World, which was her debut. So if you've been interested in trying out Ursula K. Le Guin and her really interesting approach to science fiction, this could be a great opportunity. I do know Tor has published some of her other books as well. It's a little bit of a mix. Some of her books come out through different publishers, but Tor publishes a few of them. This I really liked. I think it has an interesting introduction. And if you haven't read Ursula K. Le Guin, it's a pretty great entry point. The three novels are the first three in the Hainish cycle or Hainish series. The Left Hand of Darkness is also in this cycle, and you don't have to read them all or read them all in order because they're companion novels, but I think some of the themes and the larger world do build upon each other if you read them in order. So that might be one to try. The final physical book I'm going to suggest is a great option if you want fun, fast-paced science fiction with a bit of a mystery plot to it and queer representation. That is Dream Ships by Melissa Scott. I actually read this one just last year for the first time. Melissa Scott is a lesbian science fiction and fantasy writer, and she's written other books in the 90s, maybe in the 80s as well for tour. I just don't own and haven't read them, but you could look into that. This one came out in 1992, and it is a futuristic book following a young woman who ends up getting recruited to pilot this unusual ship and things go really, really wrong. It deals with AI, it deals with human rights stuff, and the main character is casually bisexual. So if you're looking for a book that is pretty easy to get through a fairly fun time and has queer representation from the 90s, you might try Dreamships.
or other books by Melissa Scott because I think a lot of her books actually have that kind of queer representation that is own voices and it's fun to see something like that from this time period. Next up is Ender's Game by Orson Scott Card. Again, as I said, I understand why there are people who choose not to read from Orson Scott Card because of some of the homophobic comments that he has made, but this is a book that I personally had really loved. It meant a lot to me. I read it first as a teenager and I, you know, it's and it's one of those books that it is such a shame because to be honest, I think there are a lot of queer kids who read this and really latched onto it because it is about being different and about being an outsider. And I think that that resonated for a lot of people who were queer or nerdy or weird or outsiders in some way. And so it's always so unfortunate when we get authors who are able to write things like that that can connect so well. Um, who, who, you know, then go and run their mouths and say things that are not great. But Ender's Game was originally published in the mid 80s. And I would say that it reads a lot younger than the later books in the series, which are older, partly because it follows a child named Ender, who at six years old is put in this military training academy that's pretty intense and kind of what he goes through in that training process. I also just think it's really interesting because Orson Scott Card has written several books that have a lot of homoerotic subtext to them, including Ender's Game. I don't know. But um, I do think that this was a very significant book for science fiction and one that I personally really loved. Then I've got a couple of books that I read a very long time ago. So take my thoughts with a grain of salt. But a 1999 release was A Cavern of Black Ice by J.V. Jones. I remember just eating up this series. It was like a fantasy series that had a lot going on, had some interesting characters and magic and women and like, I, I, I need to go back and reread the series to be honest, because it's been so many years since I read it. But I just remember being enthralled. And one of my younger brothers also picked this up and it was what got him into reading was this series. So this might be something to check out. J.V. Jones is a British woman who was writing in science fiction and fantasy. And this this was, I think, her debut novel. It was great. The last one that I have read personally before I get into a few suggestions that you could check out that I can't vouch for because I have not read them is a book that like I'm gonna say it counts even though technically it was published in the year 2000. So you know it's like right on that edge but there were probably advanced copies in 1999. This is Rhapsody by Elizabeth Hayden. Another series that I remember really enjoying, it had some like weird elements to it and it went on really long. I think I read the first three or four books, but again, it's been years and it had like a music magic system to it, if I'm remembering correctly. And I want to say had some like sci fantasy elements to it. I don't remember a lot about it. It's been a lot of years, but I do remember liking it. And since it's like right on that cusp, I thought I would throw it in here. For recommendations, all of these are books that I have not read personally, so I can't vouch for them, but they did come out from tour and they look interesting. The Magic of Recluse or Recluke, I'm not sure, by Ellie Modesit Jr. This is another author that I just really haven't read, but it is the first book in a long running fantasy series. This book came out in 1992. And let's see what Goodreads says about it. Young Laris is dissatisfied with his life and trade and yearns to find a place in the world better suited to his skills and temperament. But in Recluse, a change in circumstances means taking one of two options, permanent exile from Recluse or the danger geld, danger geld? a complex, rule-laden wander jar in the lands beyond Recluse, with the aim of learning how the world works and what his place in it might be. Many do not survive, but that's what he chooses. When Laris is sent into intensive training for his quest, it soon becomes clear that he has a natural talent for magic, and he will need magic in the lands beyond where the power of the chaos wizards reigns unchecked. So I don't know if this is like a medieval fantasy inspired thing. I, I'm not 100% sure, haven't read it, but 
this could be something to check out. My final suggestion is from another author that I don't believe that I've read from, shamefully, I guess, shamefully, because I feel like he's been around forever. But this is The Forge of God by Greg Bear. This is a science fiction novel that was originally published by Tor in 1987. It says, on July 26th, Arthur Gordon learns that Europa, the sixth moon of Jupiter, has disappeared. Not hiding, not turned black, but gone. On September 28th, Edward Shaw, a geologist working in Death Valley, finds a mysterious new cinder cone in a very well-mapped area. As more unexplained phenomena spring up around the globe, a granite mountain appearing in Australia, sounds emanating from the Earth's core, flashes of light among the asteroids, it becomes clear to some that the end is approaching and there is nothing that can be done. Interesting. This sounds really interesting, to be honest. I have not read this. It says it describes the final days of the world on both a massive scientific scale and an everyday emotional context of individual human lives. Facing the destruction of all they know, some people turn to God, others to their families, and a few turn to saviors promising escape from a planet tearing itself apart. That actually sounds really fascinating. So hopefully this was a helpful video and gave you some starting points for your own research into finding a book that could meet this challenge. Or if you're just somebody who's curious to read some older titles from Tor, this could be a great starting point. Talk to me in the comments down below. Let me know any of your thoughts or feelings on anything I talked about in this video. And for your question of the day, I, I have two questions. Number one, do you have any additional titles that I missed that maybe you've read? I mean, I know they've published far more than this. This is kind of like the tip of the iceberg, but are there any specific titles that you would suggest that were published in the 80s and 90s from Tor? Let me know in the comments down below. Otherwise, are there any books that I talked about in the video today that piqued your interest? I would love to hear from you. If you like this video, it always helps if you give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see more. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.